What's up guys, it's Shane here with Rice Creek Bushcraft. I have a new tool I'd like to share with you guys. Um, I just received it, I don't know, four or five days ago. And myself and the family are up north at a friend's cabin in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so there's no electricity here. We've got an awesome cabin, but there's no electricity. Um, nobody's been up here in a year or so, so the trails were a little bit overgrown. <clears throat> so it gave me a good um, chance to test this new axe out. And the axe we're talking about is a council tool woodcraft pack axe. So of course I'm going to give you a better view and we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show you and we're going to talk about everything about this axe. Uh, first I'd like to introduce to you my lovely assistant, Shaylee. Come here, Shaylee. She's going to be helping out today. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. So, she's eight, and she's going to be my little helper today. And uh, so, I'm going to show you guys what this, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the specs. We're going to do take some measurements. I have my tape here. I'll do some bucking and some delimbing, and I'll tell you what I think of it. I've already used it for several hours on a couple different vacations here, cutting trees down and delimbing and all of those types of things. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna move forward. We'll kind of show you some close-ups and uh, we'll talk about this ax a little bit. So, okay, so, yeah, this isn't the best view. Hold on, let me adjust this. All right, I think it's always the worst trying to get set up so you can see what's going on. Of course, my I got a new uh, thing for my bipod and it doesn't want to cooperate here. All right, after much dinking around. Okay, so we've got the Council Tool Woodcraft Pack Axe. So they make um, this one is a 24 inch handled model with a two pound head. Then they make a 19 inch with a two pound head. Then they make a 16 inch with a, I think 1.5 or 1.7. I think it's 1.5, but that's got a 16 inch handle. So doing the measurements, I don't know where these guys learn how to measure, but this is to the end of the head is 22 and just over a half. Um, it's supposed to be 24. So I don't know where they came up with that, but regardless, this one's 22 and a half. Maybe some of them are 24. We'll take this mask off. I guess we might as well talk about that right now. The mask is super, super nice. It's sewn and it has these heavy duty stainless steel rivets in it with a heavy duty buckle. It's very thick leather. It's a really nice mask, really knit fit. When I first received it, it was pretty tough to get this um, on here to get it buckled on or snapped on. But I just worked at it a little bit and I was able, I put a little bit of water on it. I was able to get it to where now it's nice and tight. And they do that for a reason. It's so, they make it a little short initially. So it, it stays um, tight for, for many years. Otherwise, if they make it long enough to snap really easily right off the get-go it'll it'll be loose really quickly so there's that the head is six and a half inches long and the bit is three and a quarter this direction um, some of the other things you might want to know about this is forged it's a fully forged. It's made in the United States, I believe in North Carolina. Um, it's got a harden. This this portion's hardened. The pole is hardened. So you can use it um, for for hammering on different things. I don't know how important that is to have that hardened. I mean, for usually, if for bushcraft guys, we're using this for pounding wooden tent stakes. So if it's hardened or not hardened, really doesn't make a difference. But I guess you could. Pound on other things too, because it is hardened. Um, what else I want? So it's got this, I don't know what they call this, 
but they've reduced, they've cut out this portion and the top and bottom right here. So this is thinner than the main part of the face here. I think it might be just so when you stick it into something, it comes out easier. There's less resistance because this isn't being bitten by the wood and this. So you've only got this small portion. I don't really know if that's what the case is. And I haven't used it for splitting at all. I've just done some other work with it. Um, so, as I said at the beginning of the video, I've used it quite a little bit. Um, and my initial thoughts, it's it's the best axe I've ever owned by far. I have my Gransfer's small forest axe, so everybody that's into bushcraft probably has one of these, or that's serious about it, I guess. So you can see the difference in size. I think this is um, a pound and a half. So you've got another half pound of weight here. And you've got, this is a 19 inch handle, so you've got a little bit more length, another few inches. Um, and this has been my favorite axe, bar none. This has been my favorite axe for a long time. I'm gonna move up here so we can see these a little better. But I've had several different axes and I just like this Grand Grandsforce the best for like a pack axe taken with me making shelters and, and that type of thing. I've had bigger, longer axes that were more awkward and I've had this, the, the hatchet they make, that was just too small. So I've been using this one and I really like it. Now do I think that the council tool is gonna take its place? Um, it could, I would say probably. I, I really like this ax. I really, really, really like it. It's got an American hickory handle. Now the grind typically on an ax is a convex. This is not. I don't know what, what they call it. Hold on a second here. They might call it a flat. But to me, it's just scanty grind. I mean, it's exactly the same as this LT right with the scanty grind. It comes to a zero degree. It came hair shaving sharp, just like a Grand's first does. It's very, very, very sharp. It's just spectacular. Now, in going back to the use of it, it's amazing. This is a real tool, guys. This thing is incredible. It just goes through material, and I don't know what it is, if it's that scanty grind that they put on there, but there's just a lot of things that work with it. The weight, the length of the handle, the head design, all these things must factor into how well this thing works. You can reach up here so you can do feather sticks and that type of stuff. It's got this nice cutout like a lot of the bushcraft style axes do. So instead of me blabbering on forever, I'm going to show you what this thing will do. And it's literally amazing. It, it just is incredible. So let me get set up. Okay, I think we're pretty well in focus. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how this thing chops. It's spectacular. Bites hard too. So just to give you a size comparison, this is probably about four inches across, give or take. But it's a pretty good hunk of wood here. We'll do a little splitting. I've not split anything with this, so I don't know how it is.
Oh yeah. Yeah, so it splits good. Obviously chops good. Chops really good. Let's do some delimbing here. Yeah, no problem. Let's get you guys up here a little closer. All right, so we'll just chop this baby up a little bit so you can tell how effortlessly it goes through this pine. I mean, cuts it clean. You can see it doesn't have any problem. I use the small forest axe just to give you a comparison. It's still a great little tool, no doubt, but. This thing is just wicked. You just blast through this stuff. It's crazy. Let's see if we can get a better view here. So you can see some of the stuff we've chopped up here in short order. Delimbed all this stuff, split this stuff up with no problem at all. Um, let's take another look here. Nice forge finish. It's got the C and the T for council tool on that side. This side, we've got the made in the USA. Nice extended pole there. It's nice and flat too. Okay, as far as the wedge, it's got a normal wooden wedge and then it's got one of these circular type steel wedges, which are fine. It's all put together really well. It's got, looks like pretty good grain. Pretty straight. Really matters up here. You can see it's pretty nice and straight. But overall, guys, uh, I really, uh, the work that I did along the trail down here, maybe we'll go take a look. I'll show you some of the stuff I did. Here, here's an awesome view. Got an island out there, got the slough. Here's the cabin. Very nice cabin. Let's go out here. I'll show you some of the stuff that I did. So there's a few trees here I took down. This, I took this one down. It was starting to grow into the, see this is the trail back to the cabin. Those two, took them down. Uh, there was one up in here I took down. There was one that was bent over. 
but it hung out into the secondary trail here. I took that one down. I took many limbs off these trees. You can see this two track that comes back. Uh, this stuff was starting to really grow over the trail, so I've done a lot of trimming with it. I cut down a couple in there. Yada, yada, yada. We don't need to go all the way to the front, but I took down a couple small maples. Most of it was pine, lots of limbs. So I knew right away using this that it was probably going to be my new favorite axe. Now, I do like the small forest axe a lot. I think it's a great axe to have. If I was going to do any real work, I think this is a better tool because it has a little bit more weight it's got more power i think it chops better whether that be the grind or not i i can't say but it does chop better um even than some of the other two pound axes i've had it chops better sorry there's something on the blade it looked like it was chipped it's not so i think this will get used much more than my other axes I really like it. I really like it. It's a very powerful tool, like I said before. It just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it that makes it work so well, but it works better than, and I've got seven or eight other axes than this one. You know, it, and the good thing is it's a nice size, so it's not too big and it's not too small. So you could throw this in your pack. It's 22 and a half inches or so. You could take it with you. Be great for building shelters. Um, be good for bushcraft. I did do some feather sticking with it. Like I said, it was it was hair shaving sharp. So it's just a great it's a great axe. I mean, I can see this just being you know, and it's funny because I I didn't even know that these were that these were even a thing. I just happened to come across them somehow researching axes, and I said, whoa, what's that? But I think this will just be a great tool for hunters or bushcrafters. Whatever. If you're building something out in the woods, this would be a good companion to have. So I guess that's about all I can say about it. It's, it's a really good axe. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, pricing is anywhere from 133 is what I paid, up to, I've seen them up to 180 I would say if you get one in that 150 price range, you're doing good, and it's well worth the money. I mean, is it worth 180 Sure, it's worth 180 because it's going to last you your lifetime and probably your children's lifetime. So it's it's a hell of a tool. It's built really well. It comes in a fantastic box. Um, it actually had, I don't really like to do unboxing, but it had a rubber, big thick rubber piece that went over the bit here. That was taped. And then it had saran wrap. Then it had paper over it. Then it was in a cardboard box. I mean, they did a good job of packaging it. So when I saw that, I immediately knew this is going to be a quality tool. They didn't just throw it in there and say, here you go, here's your axe. They took some time to make it look nice, good presentation. It's got nice um, extended cheeks on it. I don't know, guys. I'm going to shut up. But if you're looking for an axe, I'd go check one of these out. It's a really, really nice tool. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. See ya.